I don't think that nervous feeling ever completely goes away when you're shooting a video for a client. But I can say that that feeling is amplified by a thousand whenever you poorly plan or don't plan the video at all. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the steps that you need to take to properly plan your video shoots, how to keep things from getting messy because they can get pretty messy and what the most important steps are for ensuring your video shoot runs smoothly. The first thing I always do is schedule a meeting with a client and this can be done 15 to 30 minutes, especially if you're just getting started, maybe push it to 30 minutes, but I usually takes me like 15 to 20 minutes. And this is the opportunity for you to meet with a client. You can do it in person, virtually, or on the phone, whatever is easiest, but an opportunity for you to meet with a client and get a good understanding of what their video idea is. It's also an opportunity for the client to be able to discover more about their idea or to kind of truly define what their idea is. And down in the description, I'll have a checklist of all the questions that I asked because I asked specific questions to the client to help pull information out of them that's going to shape the entire film. And whenever I do that, I have something that helps me, one, manage expectations with the client so that if I'm working with them, they're not like, well, this wasn't actually the emotion that I was trying to go after, but because this is something that we've discussed and it's clearly defined, we no, there's no one assuming anything and it make, just makes everything a lot easier. So going through all those questions, it one, helps keep everything for me on track and make sure that I'm not leaving out any details. And then two, it helps the client really define in that moment what they actually want. And it's something that you'll reference throughout the entirety of the shoot. After meeting with the client and everyone's on the same page, I like to then look at people that are going to be in the video and then locations that we've selected for the video. And then I'm going to start trying to develop my timeline based off of that availability. And this, sometimes it happens that way. Sometimes it doesn't happen that way, but there's a lot of specific information that'll be inside of that checklist that you can reference to start building out your timeline from the time different days that you can shoot, basing it off of their deadline, and then the availability of the individuals. Let's say maybe you have to interview someone. I've had to interview four people in one day before. No, it's not something that I recommend. It's not something that I think provides the best you know, end state, but I, it is definitely possible, and you will have situations, I'm sure, that are like that where you're having to cram things into certain days just to make things happen. But what I'm getting at is just start building that timeline, the sequence of events on when things are going to be able to happen. And once you've done that, then you can start working on your script and moving on with the next steps after the script's been made. And a lot of these things are going to be kind of like rough drafts right now because you're building that script. You build a shot list of all the shots that you, you plan on getting and actually do this. Build a shot list. It will be so much easier. You don't necessarily have to storyboard if you don't want to. Some people prefer to storyboard and build a shot list. It just depends on the type of shoot and the complexity of the shoot that I'm dealing with. But for me, a lot of times I will either storyboard or I'll just come up with a shot list because I can already visualize the shots that I want in my head. So you'll have a timeline for getting B-roll for certain shots or a timeline for filming with certain people that you're going to have in the video. But start building that timeline should run parallel with that shot list. And that way you're not missing any key shots. What I like to do is actually go physically go out to those locations, if at all possible, during the times of day that we're going to be doing those shoots so that I can identify any potential conflicts that are there that could disrupt. Because there's things I've had like noisy snack machines. I've had all kinds of like crazy light coming from different directions. And people have told, I just don't assume anything. Go to the location and see and try to deconflict prior to. So that way you're not having to pull an audible the day of. Now, once you feel pretty good with your script and your shot list, I then like to go ahead and start preparing my gear checklist. And so this is gonna be a checklist of all the gear that I'm gonna bring for that specific shoot. Biggest thing for me is for accountability purposes, but it's also to make sure that I have like a list of all the things for any possible thing that I would need that's unique to that specific video shoot. And it's been, it's really helpful because I can just go down that list and I can make sure that I got batteries charged. I got stabilizers. If we need that, I got a teleprompter, whatever gear is going to be necessary to make that shoot happen. 
once all of your logistics are taken care of, if you're working with a team, this is a good time to have like a pre-production brief or a pre-production meeting just to discuss with the team what their roles are and field any questions that they may have about the shoot or concerns that they may have as well. Now it depends on the shoot, but there will be some clients that you will like to meet with prior to the actual shoot. I say that it's always safe to assume that you want to meet with them one more time before the shoot, just to send them the final script, the timelines for everything. And that way you can get their final approval instead of coming up with all of this stuff and then it not being something that they like or maybe there was miscommunication in your initial consultation. So I always like to try to meet with that client one more time prior to actual production of the film just to make sure that the script, everything is all approved. Also, at this point, I want to also verify to make sure that talent or the people that are going to be in your videos and locations, there's no conflicts Nobody got double booked or anything like that. There's been too many times where like, I've just assumed that everything would be fine and instead of verifying and kind of come back to bite me in the butt. So that's just a personal preference. I like to just double verify and make sure that locations, nobody double booked or anything like that. That way everything runs smoothly. I also have a template that I like to follow every now and then, so I'll leave that in the link below as well. Now that's how to prepare for your first video shoot, but if you wanna get more clients, check out this video right here because I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do that.